Hi everyone and thanks for your interest. Welcome to SDM, the friendly aid for creative photography, or as friendly as we can currently make it. We don't want it to get in the way of picture taking or require a degree in computing in order to understand and use it. You will not be confused and intimidated by hundreds of web pages describing its use. So, what is SDM? SDM is software that resides on a locked SD card and which is temporarily loaded when you boot the camera. It does not make any permanent changes, but as everyone says these days, you use at your own risk. Even though the card is locked, you can still record images and movies. SDM adds functions that make certain picture taking tasks easier or even possible and allows you to try techniques you may not have used before. Probably the most popular feature, and one that is very easy to use, is time-lapse. Time-lapse sequences can be captured for just an hour, or for as long as a year. Although you may already be familiar with time-lapses of clouds, sunsets, flowers opening and the effects of the changing seasons, it is interesting to create your own time-lapse movies. SDM has dozens of different time-lapse modes, but the simplest takes a photo every five seconds until you stop it. That is suitable for a surprising number of subjects. If you want to capture time lapses over days, months or a year, the camera will need to be powered by an external battery, possibly recharged by solar power, and a timer is required that turns the camera on and off each day. The camera will need to be protected from the weather and be in a secure location. It is not advisable to leave it unattended for long periods. All sorts of events that you did not envisage could ruin the entire project. You don't need the latest cameras for this. Older ones have a number of advantages and the resolution is more than adequate. Especially if you are viewing on a 1920 by 1080 pixels HD TV screen. I often use the A620 because it has good picture quality, the SD card can be accessed from the side and the external power plugs into a jack socket at the side of the camera, not a dummy battery on the underside. The next most popular feature is exposure bracketing for recording subjects that have a large brightness range that cannot be captured in a single image. The resulting series of images can be exposure blended or combined into so-called HDR images if you wish. HDR images can vary from subtle to over-the-top gaudy colours. It is your choice. SDM provides many exposure bracketing features including the synchronised mode for stereo images. Most are automatic, but one of them lets you use the camera as a spot meter for reading the brightest and darkest areas of the scene. Motion detection is another interesting application. It is based on what we call a script. A script is simply a text file containing a list of special commands that SDM understands and executes one by one. It uses a set of parameters that you have to enter the values of. This can be complicated to set up for motion detection, so SDM provides dozens of motion detection scripts with the parameters already set for you and with a detailed description of what the script does. Some of the scripts detect motion some detect lack of motion, and some are most sensitive to infrared illuminated scenes such that you might use of a night time 
to record shy animals. The focus bracketing feature allows you to create an image with a far greater range of distances in focus than you normally can. It does this by capturing images that are focused at increasingly greater distances and PC software is then used to combine the images known as a stack into a single image. The SDM download provides details of a special offer for Helicon Focus software that can be used to process the stacks. A special script is also supplied for using the Raynox DCR150 supplementary lens with a super zoom camera such as the SX50 for capturing macro stacks. The subject size can be as small as the camera sensor, roughly 6 by 4 millimetres. Kite Aerial Photography or CAP is another popular use. One particular SDM CAP script takes a single shot at an interval, a burst of shots at an interval, exposure bracketed shots and movie clips. The display can be turned off to save power and the camera can shut down and withdraw the lens for safety on completion. The sequence can be started or stopped by a USB pulse or respond to varying width pulses from certain commercial equipment. Using a technique devised by the Canon Hack Development Kit team, the shutter speed is made as fast as possible by adjusting various shooting parameters. You can obtain products that support SDM cap features from James Gentles. They also supply products that assist stereo and multi-camera photography. Unmanned aerial vehicles or UAVs employ a similar script and in addition can flash the autofocus light at three different stages of the capture sequence. A neatly formatted log file that records the exposure data and precise time the image was captured is also recorded. There is a specialised script for high altitude balloon flights or HAB as they are sometimes called. It starts with the capping of the camera's spy hole in the payload enclosure, pauses while the payload is fitted out and then automatically continues as soon as the lens cap is removed. As the balloon is launched, movie clips and images are captured. The sequence is repeated until the balloon is at high altitude and then many exposure readings are taken. These are averaged in a special way using a technique pioneered by Francesco Bonomi and used as the brightness settings for the high altitude shots. This reduces the effect the direct sun or large areas of black space could have in creating exposure errors. On descent, a mixture of fast shutter speed shots and movie clips are repeatedly taken until payload landing or battery exhaustion. SDM's original development was for synchronising two cameras for stereo photography by using a simple switch that plugs into the USB socket. The latest SDM adds many more stereo features. Single images with or without flash are easily taken and a synchronisation error of a fraction of a millisecond for most shots is achieved. Some cameras are more successful with flash sync than others, especially if auto ISO is enabled. Commercial equipment is available that supports external flash for SDM stereo. You can take burst mode synchronised shots and 3D time lapse over periods of about 30 minutes. Once shooting starts, you can even remove the switch and separate the cameras by a large distance for hyper time lapses of distant subjects. Stereo exposure bracketing is supported, as is stereo movies. Digi Das and Franz van de Kemp produce USB switches and other items 
for use with SDM's synchronised multi-camera feature. SDM also provides digiscope focus bracketing, a slick camera for streak and stereo panoramas, and various other aids that are described in the user manual. So, how do we prepare a card for SDM? We use the friendly utility called Assist. But before we do that, a word about card size. For cameras released before 2011, if you want to use a card size larger than 4GB, the card will have to be divided into two partitions by Assist. If the camera is very old, it may not support SDHC cards, so you'll be limited by what size SD cards you can obtain. 4GB SD cards are already very difficult to obtain. Another problem is that Windows only sees the first partition on the card, so you have to use a utility called WASP to swap partitions before downloading the images. The built-in card reader in laptops can sometimes give problems, so overall it is far easier to just use 4GB cards or less. Incidentally, Assist is a Java program, so it requires that Java is installed on your PC. If you have heard about Java security risks, that only refers to browser Java exploits, not applications running on your PC. Nevertheless, you may like to check that enabled Java content in the browser is not enabled in your Java control panel. Go to the Assist website and download the zip to a folder on your PC and unpack it. Read the instructions on the website carefully and determine which command you will use to launch Assist and whether you will need elevated security permissions. Also, note the remarks about 64-bit Windows systems. Using an unedited image taken with the camera, Drag it onto the window. If you have problems with that working, browse to the folder instead. Assist will identify the camera firmware version and tell you if an SDM build is available. If it is, click download and proceed to step three. Click scan for cards. The card details will be displayed. Be absolutely certain that Assist has identified the correct drive as it may need to reformat the card. Click Continue to Install step. A drop-down menu for alternative languages for the SDM menus and welcome pages can be used if required. Click Install SDM and when complete, eject the card and exit. Lock the card, insert in the camera and start in playback mode. Browse through the welcome pages using the down key. Select the left or right camera position if being used in a stereo rig and then press menu to boot into record mode. The lens will extend and a live image is displayed on the screen. Incidentally, if the welcome pages are not displayed in shades of grey, Please report it. SDM is now ready and waiting. Read the manual, you know you want to, and enjoy. Until next time, easy shooting with SDM, the friendly tool for creative photography.